In this chapter, we will explore the block structure of Snowflake scripting, which is used in both stored procedures and anonymous blocks. In our last two episodes, we had a detailed discussion about the importance of Snowflake SQL scripting. Its history explored common usage pattern, provided real-life examples, and highlighted best practices to ensure you stay away from any anti pattern while using Snowflake scripting for stored procedures. In this chapter, we will deep dive into the theory of block structure and we will also engage in practical exercises. We will elaborate and practice the optional and must section while writing blocks for stored procedures in Snowflake, understand what is anonymous blocks, we will see the compilation issues and how to fix them and challenges debugging Snowflake script as a part of stored procedures or anonymous blocks. And finally, we will create a stored procedure and anonymous block using SnowSQL CLI and understand its limitation and changes required in your script if you plan to use SnowSQL in your data project. So welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified. I will be using the free trial enterprise edition of Snowflake on AWS for this video. You can test all the SQL script used in this tutorial in free trial edition. Refer to the description below for details or downloadable content. For optimal video clarity, ensure that you are watching this video in its highest resolution, which is 4K. If you wish, you can also speed up playback rate to 1.25x or 1.5x to learn faster. You can jump to a specific chapter. The chapter detail is available in the description below or move your cursor to the chapter marking in the video bar. For discussing specific SQL challenges, design issues or architectural pattern or any other feedback or a new topic request, you can connect with me in two simple ways. Send a direct message on my Instagram or join my exclusive Facebook group. To join the Facebook group, simply scan the QR code shown on the screen. And yes, if you are a dedicated Snowflake professional looking to enhance your skill in more structured manner, Explore my premium Udemy courses to conquer your fear and level up your Snowflake expertise. Let's start with a straightforward and very simple example before observing them in action in our SnowSight web UI. When we talk about a block structure, it starts with a keyword called declare and terminated by a new line character. The declare section contains all the variables that are going to be used in the latter part of the block. Each variable declared within the declare section must end with a semicolon character. Declare is an optional section and it is not must to have declare when defining your block structure. The next section is called begin and end section and this section hold your SQL as well as Snowflake scripting. The end keyword should also end with a semicolon character. There is one more section called exception that can appear inside begin and end section. Let's quickly review how a stored procedure construct look like when working with SQL script or Snowflake scripting. This is an example of a stored procedure that is using Snowflake scripting. From line number 6 to line number 20, it is the block structure that we have seen in the previous slide. And if you look closely, line number 1 provides the name to the anonymous block. Line number two specifies data type that this anonymous block should return. Line number three specifies the language used in this stored procedure. And the line number four uses a keyword called as that allows a stored procedure body to be placed. And in this case, anonymous block that we have already seen. To create a stored procedure, the mandatory parameters include return and language. In the upcoming chapter of this playlist, we will discuss additional parameter that are optional for a stored procedure. So let's go to our Snow site and see them in action. So here I am in my Snow site web UI. So let's say I have to apply a logic where I'm going to perform a simple tax calculation and I'm going to write an anonymous block and let's review how does it look like. So this is my anonymous block because I have not given any name and this block start with a keyword called declare and here I have begin and end. So in the declare section, I have defined two variables, tax amount and base salary slab. And if you look into the line number seven to line number 12, 
I have three additional variable here I have an if condition and finally after the calculation is done the tax amount is returned from this anonymous block. So this is a very simple example I have taken for this demonstration. So if I select this and run this block let's see what result does it bring. So if you look into the result the result has brought 140k and here it says it is anonymous block. So if you look into some of the keywords like let if these are part of snowflake scripting it is not a plain SQL scripting it is primarily snowflake scripting. If I click on the query profile let's see how does it look like. This is how my query profile looks like which has a value clause and then I have a anonymous block. So here if you see system dollar anonymous block. So this is how my query profile looks like. The query profile does not show a lot of information because how this anonymous block is being executed inside Snowflake engine is kind of abstract from the Snowflake developer. Now I am going to create a stored procedure called calculate tax and I have simply copied and pasted the entire anonymous block as a body of this stored procedures. And if you look into the construct, it says create or replace procedure name of the stored procedure returns is a float and language is SQL. Now let me create this stored procedure. So my stored procedure got created successfully. Now let me run this stored procedure by using keyword called call followed by name of the stored procedure. This stored procedure is not taking any input. And once I execute this SQL statement, let's see what result does it bring. It has brought exactly the same result. And if I go and check the query profile, it looks almost the same. So it starts with a value clause and then I have a calculate tax as a result. So we have learned and the declare block is an optional block. Does it mean that I can still run an anonymous block? without the declare block and that's what we are going to do it here. So now all my variables are defined within the begin block and it does not have any declare block. Let's see if it runs or not. Yes, even without a declare block, I can execute my anonymous block. So as long as you have this begin and end and SQL or Snowflake script, you can still run this anonymous block and how do you know whether it is anonymous block or not? Your result will say that this is an anonymous block. So we have learned in theory that all the statement should end with a semicolon character. Now let's see what happens if I remove one of the semicolon and let's see what message does it give. So when I'm going to run this stored procedure where one of the semicolon has been removed. So it says syntax error unexpected base salary tab. So since the semicolon is not there, this entire statement is considered as a single statement. However, Snowflake is not able to parse it correctly. Now instead of this line, if I remove the semicolon character from line number 89, let's see what happens. It says line number 90 has an issue. So the semicolon is very, very important for all the statements that are available inside your declare block or a begin block. Now what happens if I give a semicolon here? Let's see what Snowflake does. So here it says syntax error unexpected semicolon on line number 86 which is this. So it is clearly able to identify that this is an invalid character right after the declare keyword. If I do it here. So it also says that unexpected error on the line number 90. Looks good. Now if I remove this keyword called let which allows me to declare a variable within the begin section. So it says syntax error unexpected number on line number 91. So it is pointing that this line has an issue but it is not clearly telling what exactly the issue. So sometime while debugging a very large anonymous block or a stored procedure having SQL script will have a challenge if you do not have enough proficiency using Snowflake scripting. Now the next question I have in my mind, can I have an anonymous block which does nothing but start with the keyword begin and end with the keyword end. Let's try to run that. So it says unexpected end okay and if I just copy this statement and let's see what happened. So yes it got executed though it does not return any value okay and if I simply say so I have to give a semicolon. So I got the result called empty block. 
I must have one statement within my begin and end block. So we have understood how our block should look like and what all sections are optional and what all sections are must and what is the importance of semicolon. Now what if I define this keyword in lowercase? The keywords declare begin and end are not case sensitive. Let me try with this stored procedure also. So the declare begin and end keyword or all other keyword which are applicable for our snowflake scripting are not case sensitive. So you can define in lower case or upper case. However, having all the keywords in upper case is a standard practice and make sure that whenever you are writing a stored procedure using snowflake scripting or SQL script, use all the keyword in upper case. Now we have seen how we can debug the anonymous block. But what if we make mistake in our stored procedure during the creation of the stored procedure, does it get compiled? So let me make this mistake here. So I have removed the semicolon from line number 33 and now it should not be compiled. So this is an important thing specifically with snowflake scripting. If your stored procedures are having syntax error or a parsing error, during the creation of the stored procedure, your stored procedure will fail saying that it has syntax error or a parsing error and Snowflake will not allow you to create the stored procedure. However, if you are going to use JavaScript or any other programming construct during the creation of the stored procedure, it will not be validated and during the runtime, your error will appear. Next, we are going to use SnowSQL CLI to create the same stored procedure as well as anonymous block and see what changes are required. So this is my SnowSQL CLI screen and let me copy this entire anonymous block and I am going to paste it here and let me execute. After pressing the enter, SnowSQL CLI could not recognize the entire anonymous block and it started throwing error. To run the anonymous block in your SnowSQL CLI, you need to make a couple of changes. The first, you need to have the keyword called execute image and then have the double dollar and also end your entire anonymous block with the double dollar followed by semicolon. Now let me copy this. Here I got the result. So if you or your team member uses SnowSQL CLI for query execution, make sure if they are using Snowflake scripting. So this is the change they have to apply in their Snowflake scripting. Now why it is important for us to understand. It is possible that you might be executing a lot of SQL file using SnowSQL CLI with minus F option. Let me run this SQL script directly from the file and show you the result. So both these scripts are stored with name called without dollar and with a dollar and without dollar sign looks like this and with a dollar sign looks like this. When I'm going to execute this file directly, let's see what happens. So my entire SQL statement failed saying that 001003 SQL compilation error. If I execute the same anonymous block where execute immediate keyword followed by dollar sign is available, let's see what happens. So my statement got executed and the result also appeared. So is it possible that I can follow the same approach in my snow site web UI? Yes, you can do that. So here I have encapsulate this entire anonymous block with execute immediate followed by double dollar and it also ends with a double dollar. Let me execute and show you the result. You need to do the same thing for stored procedures. Let me quickly copy this. Now when I am creating a stored procedure, so, so this is my calculate tag 02 and here I am creating a stored procedure where my stored procedure body is encapsulate with double dollar. This got created successfully and let me run this. I got the result. Now one interesting thing to notice, let's say if I remove this semicolon from here and try to recreate this stored procedure, let's see what happens. 
since it is a SQL script, it is able to identify that there is a syntax problem. So if you are planning to use legacy web UI or if you are planning to use SnowSQL CLI for creating stored procedure, Snowflake scripting, make sure that you encapsulate all your body using double dollar character. We have understood the block structure construct, the optional and must section, the keyword case sensitive applicability, the structure of stored procedure versus anonymous block, different compilation issues and error code and changes required if these Snowflake script need to be executed using SnowSQL CLI. In the next chapter, we will go and discuss about variables, data type support for variables, how to use these variables and variable scope. Be sure not to miss the upcoming chapter which features a hands-on tutorial that is crucial for understanding how to write Snowflake scripting using variables. I hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content, but also helps other to discover this playlist. And if you think it can help someone else in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together.